I received my new transmitter today, it's a Tornogy 9XR. Uh, and the th first thing I will do is to replace the standard firmware that it came with, with the version of Open 9X, which is my personal favorite. And uh, I'll basically walk you through the parts you need and how to do it. Okay. To start off with, you will be needing one of these. This is uh, the programmer that you need to program the radio. It's a so-called USB ASP programmer. These are very common, quite inexpensive. I think they go for about $4 on eBay. This particular one is about $5 from um, Hobby King. And, uh, it's really worth it, the extra dollar, because this one has got two contacts. This is 10 poles, that's 6 poles. The 6 pole contact is the one we will be using for the radio. So you have to get hold of either uh, a cable like this, or uh, if you have the usual, which actually is 10 pole to 10 pole cable, you will need an adapter from 10 pole to 6 pole. Uh, those are very inexpensive too, like two dollars, but why bother? Uh, I've also found that this particular uh, type of programmer works without any problems. I have had problems with other kinds, so why not get that one? You will also be needing a battery to power your transmitter, and basically any three cell uh, LiPo battery will do uh, and that's because we will be using the balancing plug not the power plug like you use if you put it on in uh, some kind of aircraft uh, and these two three cell batteries have the same kind of balancing plug the most usual one The next thing you need is a copy of the program Companion 9X. This is the home page of the program and you navigate here easiest by using Google and just looking for Companion 9X. You could also use the address which is code.google.com slash p slash companion 9x. Okay, when you found your way to the home page, we'll scroll down here and a bit down you've got the do downloads. And uh, there are downloads both for Ubuntu 64 and 32 bit, uh, and for Macintosh and Windows. The Windows is not here, so we'll go to here. We've got the Windows download. I'm using Windows 7, so this is what I need to download. Okay, I'll start to download now. The download is finished. I'll go ahead and install it. I'll just jump through the default settings here and it will launch okay this is basically the program you will be using. It's got functions for really a lot of different things. You can use it to back up settings from your uh, transmitter. You can store settings. and You could, for example, uh, program 10 different models on one transmitter, store it here, and then flash it onto another transmitter. Uh, and you can also use it for simulation of the software so you could set up particularly difficult mixes in this program and test how it works before you try it on your radio. 
uh, we won't be doing all of that. We'll just do the most basic thing. The most basic thing is found here, and that is to download software. Uh, you won't be able to see it very clearly, but let's step in here. I'll expand it. Okay, and this is the firmware configuration dialog. Uh, there are basically a lot of different firmware kinds of Open9x, and, and the reason is that it's not just one or two or five different versions that are compiled. It's compiled exactly the way you specified it. So if I, for example, I will be uh, using the Swedish version, uh, I won't have any telemetry, and I'll have a, a couple of other switches set. That exact firmware will be compiled for me on a build server and downloaded to me. Uh, I mean, that specific firmware might, might be used by no one else in the world. So, I, it's completely customable. Here. Customizable. So, uh, I'll make my selections, and you can play around with this. Uh, basically, Everything seems alright. I want templates. I don't want any splosh splash screen or perhaps I'll, I'll use that this time. Uh, I'll uh, be using auto switches which I like. No imperial. Okay, this is pretty much it. My language is Swedish, so I've selected that. You have Swedish, uh, English, French, German, Italian, Czech, Spanish and Portuguese to select from. And now I'll go ahead and download the firmware. I'll put it in the default place like that and let the download proceed. Okay, the download just finished and uh, I now get the option to load the firmware to the transmitter. I'll set it up and do that. I will start by uh, connecting the programmer in the USB port and what I'm not showing you now is the installation of the uh, the driver software. The driver software for the USB ASP is not installed by Companion 9X and it's not part of the usual installation in Windows 7 either. Uh, you will probably need to install it completely manually. At least the automatic installation has never, never succeeded for me. It's quite the bitch to install actually. Uh, you'll have to find out how to do that in different, different places. So, now we've got the radio here. And without turning the radio on, we will hook it up to the programmer and this is the little tab that hides the progra programming contact like so so let's step through and we're on the start screen okay uh, now the transmitter is powered from the computer, which is the way it's supposed to be. So this is normal. The next step is to load the firmware to the transmitter. And I'll get the question here whether or not I want to exchange the picture. Yeah, I want to do that. Uh, Okay, and this seems okay. And let's start the flash. And as you can see, the transmitter went blank, and that's completely normal too. And uh, we'll wait until the USB ASP has turned off the red light. At least on this particular item, it's red. It might be any color on your particular version of programmer. And I think that. Yes, underneath this dialog you had the progress bar. There, 
it's uh, written and now it's verifying that the file wasn't corrupted in the memory of the transmitter. A bit boring to watch and you will have seen it a lot of times before you've done this <laughs> to your liking, believe me. Okay, that's it. Everything is go. The next thing you need to do is to install your battery. Okay, just pop the battery compartment up like that. I'll take the smallest one of the two batteries I showed you previously. It doesn't really matter as long as it's three cell, so it'll fit here. Okay. Went in nicely. I naturally won't fly with this smaller battery, but it will do nicely for just testing that everything works. So it's time to turn it on, but first I set the throttle to off and all the switches to the downmost position to not have to deal with the alarm. Okay. I'll turn it on and uh, the e EEPROM is, uh, uh, is, uh, is warning here because it's corrupted because it's not formatted at, at all. So I'll press a button like that and it's formatting. And there you go. It's running 9x and the throttle is not completely turned off. Ah. Uh, I would say the sticks needs to be uh, needs to be calibrated. I'll step you through that. Okay. So this is the start screen, and the first thing you will want to do is to calibrate the sticks. So long press left, and here we've got the calibration menu. So start with the menu button. I'll center everything like that, these are centered, like that, I'll go to the maximum extension of all the controls, and that's it, calibrated. So, that's basically it. Uh, now you can set up the radio on long press left here and set up your models on long press right there. And that's all for today. Bye bye.